Hi, my name is Mia and with this series, I'm going to make life easier for you. I'll be the one that will help you find all the answers to questions you might still have about coming to Breda and to start your studies at Breda University of Applied Sciences. Think of topics like finding accommodation, opening a bank account, side job, public transport, but of course, I'm also going to show you vibrant Breda and the different Boas buildings. After you watch the series, you are for sure totally ready for your new adventure. Let's go! Hello guys, nice to see you again. Today we're going to talk about what it actually costs to study in the Netherlands. And we're also going to talk to an expert from Duo on how to finance that cost. So it's really important for you guys to watch the whole video. Attending a university is one of the most significant decisions a person can make today. But it also comes with a price tag. Getting admitted to the program of your choice is only one part of the challenge. And the other part is making it affordable. Let's find out what studying actually costs and what the possibilities for funding are. Let's start with tuition fee. Are you enrolling at a university? Then you'll be charged tuition fees. And you need to pay those tuition fees to the university. There are two types of tuition fees, statutory and institutional. It applies on a lot of factors which tuition fee applies to you. You can figure that out on the BUAS website. Next to that, there are of course some additional study costs. There are some programs that have some extra study related costs, such as uniform for the hotel program or a certain software for the game program. Make sure to check those extra costs out on the page of your study program. Besides studying, you of course have to live. You have to buy groceries, you maybe want to go to the gym and other things. So there are some additional costs just for living. I would also take into account the cost, for example, for housing, immigration, insurance and visa fees. To give you an example, I spend around 1000 to 1500 a month with my rent, but I'm a big spender. So it depends if you're a big spender or you like to live cheaply. So it seems like a lot of money for a student. But believe me, the Dutch government is trying to make it as accessible as possible for international students. In the Netherlands, the higher education is subsidized for students from EEA countries, Suriname or Switzerland. Which means that tuition fees can be kept relatively low, especially compared to the UK or the USA. But I know, it seems still like a lot of money. But there are some options to make it cheaper and get help. Let me show them to you. One of the options is scholarships, but keep in mind that scholarships are only accessible for non-EU students. The options of the scholarship that may be useful for you can be found on buas.nl slash scholarships. So for a lot of you, the scholarships are not applicable, but that's why we have Duo. But Duo has a lot to offer and it's a little bit difficult topic for me to explain. So let's go to Eintern to talk to Rob, who's an expert from Duo. Hi Rob! Hello. Thank Hi. you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. Nice meeting you. You, I think you're the guy who can answer all my unanswered questions. That's right, come in. Thank you. Could you maybe introduce yourselves to the audience and maybe also tell us a bit about Duo? Yeah, sure, no problem. My name is Rob and I'm working at Duo, Dienst Uitvoering Onderwijs. And Duo is a government organization who provides student finance to students who are studying in the Netherlands. Okay, so uh, this is for the student loans in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. but when are you eligible for getting a student loan? Yeah, when you want to apply for the student finance, there are three requirements. Okay. And the first requirement is your age. So you have to be under 30 and then you can apply for the student finance. Then okay. you have the second requirement and that's the course you are doing. And you have to do a full-time course at HBO University or MBO and then you can apply for the student finance. So that's the second requirement. Okay. And the third requirement is that it's the nationality and you need to have the Dutch nationality to uh, get the student finance. Or it can be possible that you have uh, a residence permit and then it's based on the kind of residence permit you have if you can uh, receive the finance or not. And if you're from one of the EU countries, it's also possible to receive the student finance while you're working more than 56 hours in the Netherlands. And if you're not able to work 56 hours in the Netherlands, then we uh, also can look at your personal situation and then you can contact Duo for that. So there are some possibilities for you as an EU student to get a Dutch student loan or some possibility. Yeah, that's right. When you meet the three requirements, uh, you can receive the Dutch uh, student finance. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. 
Since we're talking about the student finance, I heard there are some different components. Could you maybe tell us about that? Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, well, there are three different components. And the first com component is the supplementary grant. And the supplementary grant is based on the income of your parents. Oh, yeah. And to calculate the supplementary grant, we always check the income of the parents of two years back. And well, when we uh, have calculated your supplementary grant, that's an amount you can get on your bank account uh, each month. And also the EU students? Or yeah, only? that's right. Okay. Yeah. So when you're working in the Netherlands, then uh, you also can get the supplementary grant and that's also for the EU students. And is that, uh, that grant something you have to pay back or not? That's a good question. It's something uh, you don't have to pay back when you get your diploma within uh, 10 years. We always advise you to apply for the supplementary grant because that's something you don't have to pay back when you get your diploma. It's like an extra uh, bonus. That's right, yeah, it's a, it's a performance related grant. Yeah. Okay, that's really good to know. Yeah, so that's the first uh, component and then you have the second component and the second component is the regular loan and the tuition fee loan. Both of these, it's a loan, so you always have to pay back the loan when you finish with your uh, study. And at the moment, the interest is zero percent. I also wanted to ask about it because mm -hmm. I heard it's a really uh, you have really low interest in the Netherlands on the yeah. student loans. That's right. Zero percent. Yeah, at the moment. That's yeah, really that's good. Right. <laughs> yeah, it can change each uh, calendar year, so uh, it can change, but at the moment, uh, it's uh, zero percent. We also have the tuition fee loan. That's also within the second component. And that's also a loan you can get extra on top of the regular loan. And then you have the third component, so that's also a part of the student finance. And that's the student travel product. The OV card. The OV card, <laughs> that's right. And with the travel product you can travel for free during the weekdays and in the weekends in all the public transport uh, in the Netherlands. Do you have to work 56 hours to be eligible to get that or can you apply for that separately? When you are an EU student and you're working more than 56 hours, then you can get the student finance. The student travel product is also part of the student finance. Okay, so yeah. you cannot get that separately. That's right, okay. yeah. And then I want to ask about uh, what are the amounts of the student loans? And the supplementary grant, the maximum amount is 419 euros each month. Okay. And then we have the regular loan, that one is 519 euros each month. And then you have the tuition fee loan and that one is 90 euros a month. But you can apply for a uh, lower if you don't want the full amount. That's right, it's always okay. possible to apply for a lower loan if you want. And it's also possible to change it each month. So you're not stuck with the loan uh, when you uh, apply for a certain amount. It's really good if you can see, oh, I don't need this much, That's I right. will loan. It's yeah. really good to know. We always advise you to uh, change it when you do not need the loan. That's exactly. Right. What are the difference between the loans that you just mentioned? We have a regular loan and a tuition fee loan. And the tuition fee loan is just uh, an extra loan on top of the regular loan. Okay. And the height of the tuition fee loan is based on the tuition fees you have to pay in one school year. So that's okay. just an amount you can get as an extra loan each month on top of the regular loan. So to be clear, you mm -hmm. have to work for the supplementary grant, mm -hmm. the student loan, and also the student travel card? That's right. Yeah. But what about the tuition fee? Yeah, for the loan tuition fee, you don't have to work. So oh, okay. uh, only for the supplementary grant, the regular loan and the student travel product, you have to work. But for the tuition fee loan, you don't have to work. So okay. each EU student uh, can apply for the tuition fee loan without working. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. So for how long can you receive the student finance? Yeah, you can receive the student finance for a total of seven years. Okay. And for the first four years of those seven years, you can receive the supplementary grant. For the first five years of those seven years, you can use the student travel product. And for the full seven years, you can apply for the regular loan and the loan tuition fees. Okay, so after the fifth year, you cannot get the student grant? Before. That's right. Yeah. yeah. From the sixth year, the student travel product stops. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when you talk about additional earnings, you don't have to stop the student finance when you have a job. So uh, okay. your income doesn't affect the student finance. All right, a lot of good information, but mm -hmm. am I maybe missing some important question that you would like to inform the international students? Yeah, well, we really advise you to look at our website for more information. You can go to duo.nl okay. and over there we have also an international visitor uh, part of the site. So you can click that link and over there you can also find all this information in English. And when you scroll to the bottom of the site, there is also a link to our contact page. And over there you can find our phone number. So if you have got any further questions, you can call us. And of course, it's also possible to make an appointment at one of our offices uh, here in the Netherlands. Okay, that's really good to know. Yeah. 
uh, then I think it's really clear and super helpful for the international students. Okay, great. So thank you so much for your time and your really clear answer. You're welcome. Okay, so now we talked about everything, how we can finance your studies. But in the next episode, we're going to talk about working in the Netherlands. And we're actually going to visit my workplace. See you there.